everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the DCL Show, coming to you from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined on the show this week by my good friends and Dreams Unlimited travel agents, Teresa Eccles. Hello. Elaine Edwards. Hi, friends. And our producer, Mr. Craig Williams. Ahoy, ahoy. And just a reminder that this show, along with all the shows we produce, brought to you by DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com, of which I am one of the owners. And if you like our content, the best way to show us is to book your next Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line, Adventures by Disney, Olani, Royal Caribbean, Carnival, you name it, we book it. Book your next vacation with Dreams Unlimited Travel. You'll get the services of one of these great agents. Uh, If you're doing a cruise with us, you're going to get a beautiful welcome basket that Teresa and her team put together out in our welcome center out in uh, Cape Canaveral. Uh, You're also going to get a shipboard credit up to $1,000, all for the same price you're going to pay Disney. So you get a lot more for your money booking with DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com. So we would appreciate it your support. Now this week we're going to talk about tipping because this is a big conversation that a lot a lot big question a lot of people have is, you know, how does tipping work? Now normally normally there are standard gratuities for your stateroom host, your uh, server. server, assistant server, head server um and elaine has the breakdown of those so elaine why don't you go ahead and tell us all about that yes so the standard gratuities that will either be loaded and charged to your stateroom account when you board or you can prepay them before your cruise they equal out to 1350 per person per night and the way that that gets divided is 450 for your stateroom attendant, 450 for your dining room server, 350 for your assistant server, and one dollar for your head server. That's three dollars and fifty cents and four dollars and fifty cents, not Correct. hundreds of dollars, right? Yeah. And you no. can adjust that, right? Per when you're per on night. the ship. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that's that's the that's the like baseline standard, um, and how this works is they will actually on your very last night, they will leave you some little envelopes in your room and some little coupons, and you just put the little coupon in the little envelope that says that you've prepaid your gratuities, and you can hand it um, to each of these people if you like. Not mandatory, but optional you can add more and you can do this by visiting guest services and adding more there or if you want to put cash in those envelopes that's what i do do uh, um i choose to do this as well we always really 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 um heavily tip our stateroom attendants because they just i cannot believe how much they just fawn over you and t- like taking your cell phone um cable and like winding it up and putting a little velcro tab on it and like literally like picking up my underwear off the floor and folding it and putting it on the shelf like they just yeah. <laughs> i know they do but because of that i don't leave my panties on the floor elaine <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah, I mean, no, I'm 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 very mindful of that I'm too. I'm pretty mindful of when we took that Mediterranean cruise and I was alone in the cabin and I realized I had a hostess and I was thankful for that because she was very helpful in a lot of ways. And um I realized then, okay, she's folding stuff she don't need to be folding. Yeah. I just but they don't they're not intrusive about it. If it's something no, that is not. left out and about, they do find a way to to straighten it up for right. you. Yeah, and, they don't put in the a way he's on the towel animal's yeah. head or anything. No, know. and it's it's everything. It's your shoes that are on the ground. It's if you just like let leave your luggage strewn about, if your electronics and stuff, if you choose to leave them out, which, you know, it that's at your discretion. I mean, I never leave my computer sitting out 
on top or anything but as elaine said with the cords and stuff they will make sure that everything looks neat and pretty for you when you walk back in the room and it's it it's this extra level of service that you do like you might think of yourself as being a clean person and then the stateroom attendant comes in and tells you like no i can i can be better than even you at it and they do they do an awesome job see and i'm messy i'm messy in my staterooms and so I'm I'm very generous with the stateroom hosts because mm-hmm. I know I'm making them work and I take care of them. I take care of them. Yeah. I got ill on um, the last cruise I was on. One night I got some bad escargot or something and I physically got ill and I cleaned it all up, I thought, and I felt embarrassed that, you know, the hostess was going to come in and, you know, and see that I, you know, had an issue in the bathroom with my getting ill. And they never, they just, I'm sure they see everything, you know. Oh, I'm sure they have stories. They've seen things that, yeah. They have stories But I don't want to be one of those stories. (laughs) Now, the other one uh, that we get uh, asked about a lot is concierge. Um, Because there are no guidelines given for what to tip concierge, which drives me nuts. But I know what they're, what they consider to be an average. Um, Spell the tea. Please tell us. Absolutely. On a three or four night cruise, a decent average tip is about $150. So you figure about $50 a day for the stateroom, not per person. For a seven-day, $300 for a room, but tips can be all over the place because, again, there's no standard. So you might think, oh, I'm going to give them 20 bucks and they're going to be happy. No. Um, so you figure between 150 and 300 is an appropriate tip for the concierge team. Again, that's per stateroom for the concierge team, not per person, per concierge, because you usually have three or four concierge um and especially if you you're like me and you have lots of special requests like oh can you get me the cabana on castaway key please oh can you get me palo can you get me this can you get me that um and i'm i'm known as a very very good tipper um i i don't ever tip the minimum i don't ever tip unless it's bad unless it's bad that's a different story but i can count on one hand with fingers left over the number of times i've really had service so bad that i decided that i would pull back on a tip um for me if i leave 15 percent at a restaurant you did a bad job yeah you did a bad job um, but concierge again, because I don't know why Disney doesn't just publish guidelines for tipping your concierge. I, I don't understand why they don't do that, but that's figure for a three night cruise, 150 bucks, three or four night, seven night, 300. Those are considered good tips for your concierge team. Sounds good. Other places yes. you'll need um, cash. Your porters, when you drop your luggage off, you want to make sure you have cash to tip them. And um, when you're in the spa, if you have a spa treatment, I tip in there too. If I have, you know. I. Yes. Be mindful when you're at one of the bars. They are including a gratuity. There's an automatic gratuity put on what what you're paying. And you'll see the line there for tip. That's an additional gratuity that goes directly to that server. The auto gratuity is pulled among all the servers. But any additional tip goes directly to that server. See, and I didn't know that until recently, that that's how they do it. Yeah, you think that <clears throat> auto one is going just to you. So person. I'm always, I'm always, mm-hmm. you know, if they're good, if it's like a, you know, 
Yeah. I'm uh, always adding a little something onto that. No, that, that makes actually a lot of sense because there are like, uh, listen, it's Disney Cruise Line, so the service is fantastic, but that's not to say that every bartender is also made equal on that ship. And um, you will notice at a lot of bars that they work interchangeably very easily. But if you do start adding that extra gratuity, gratuity on, uh, those bartenders will start to come back to you quicker and quicker and they get to know your name uh, okay, take, very rapidly. Take it from the alcoholics in the room. Because the way these conversations have gone these last couple shows, I don't think I'm alone. Uh, functioning alcoholic is what I like to say. Yeah, to I myself. was functioning too for a long time, <laughs> allegedly. Um, that was my thing. I figured out what bar was going where when I was traveling, what bar was going to be my go to. And the first drink, I left a hundred dollar tip. For the rest of my trip, I never had to wait for a drink, and my drinks were strong, strong drinks. And I still tipped really well each time oh, I yeah. went in. But Give me a double captain and Coke. Here's a hundred bucks. Take care of me. Yeah. Yeah. And I was getting triples. <laughs> yeah. With the, you know, I, I stick to my DCL refillable beer mug. That is my favorite thing in the world. And I, I usually, every single time I get a pour, I add an extra dollar on sometimes $2, depending on like if I'm in a rush and then at the end, you know, usually I'm with the same bartender the entire time. And that's when I'll finally go big right at the end with it. But I mean, it makes a difference when you only add that $1 or two on it's it, it, when it does help you is like if you're in a rush right before a show and you want to get a drink to go into the show or right before dinner and you know, they see you coming, and if you have the same exact order every single time, they they will not even ask you any questions. They will make sure that it is there waiting for you yeah. as soon as they spot you. And, I mean, it's, it's one of those things. It just helps you maximize your time on a DCL vacation. And I've said before, I'm a person who doesn't like to just sit back and relax. I like doing right. the shows. I like moving around to different trivias and all the entertainment. And... Sometimes if you're sitting and waiting five minutes for a drink, that can be like you miss the start of a show easily with that. That so. happened to me in Pink. I was on a cruise in September, spent a couple evenings in there having some champagne. Went back in December when I cruised with you, Pete. Bartender remembered me from three months before. Mm -hmm. and Happens all the time. And, and uh, Happens all she the time. came right up with what I wanted and it was makes you feel <sighs> special. You're Welcome amazing. to the Functioning Alcoholics Club, oh, Teresa. Please. It's the only time I drink. <laughs> only on DCL? <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's a good time. Another yeah. time that you might want to have a little bit of cash, um, Teresa brought up about like the luggage porters, is if you order room service. Um, because room service is um, at no cost, it's included with your cruise, you might not think about it, but the person that's delivering it to you, I usually like to give them a couple dollars. Um Another one is your cabana attendant, if you have a cabana. Um, this one, it's another kind of one of those things that's like, I don't think that there is a right answer. Um, on my cruise in August, we gave our attendant, Gregory, we gave him $50 because he was just so amazing and so personal and all of that. We didn't even ask him for anything, honestly. The only thing he did was really like go kart us back and forth. Um, but the people that we shared a cart with at the end, when he brought us back to the ship, they gave him $10. So I, I, again, I don't really know if there's a true right or wrong answer. Um, but we felt like he was just, he was willing to do anything that we asked. So you see, and we whenever I have a cabana, cause I, I love concierge on the ship and I'm usually in concierge and so I consider that tip at the end to the concierge because that's the, con the, the, the cabana attendants are actually concierge staff. Um, not the people getting your drinks, but the people that come when you hit the magic button in your Refill cabana, your stuff. Yeah. Um, th that's all concierge staff. So 
Um, I never even thought about that, Elaine. Now I'm like, should I have been he, tipping individually? I don't know that he was part of the concierge staff because we didn't really think about it at the time that we went out to the cabana. So we didn't, we actually asked him, we said, we're, we want to get more cash for you. Where can we find you? And he said, tomorrow I'll be at the pool all day, like the main pool on the ship. Um, he oh. was kind of just general like life. But was this the guy getting your drinks though? Yeah. Like he and he, yeah, but that's, a that's a server. That's a, that's a server. I'm talking about the actual cabana attendants. When you hit the magic button, yeah. okay, the person yeah. that comes is not a drink person. They'll get the drink person for you. Um, no, this, the, this was this was our actual attendant um, because a few times I hit the button just so he would come, and I said, I missed you, Gregory. Like, it was literally – and he drove us back and forth, and we well, asked you're one of them. You're one of those yeah. people. Back. Like – Just appear. Beep. Ten dollars. It was it's definitely him. But again, maybe it's, it, this was not normal times. This was the very first cruise in August, so this they were not at the staffing capacity. This was not normal times. That that could have been the explanation for that. Okay. I have a question, and I don't know if anyone can answer it. But do, has anyone ever tried to Venmo? Any servers or anything on DCL? No, I thought about that. Stella was actually asking me about that. And I don't know if that's possible. I'm going to find out on this cruise I go on. You yeah, find right. out and add a little thing right here. Yes or no. Can we Venmo? And after in the after production. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that, you know, not all cast members may be comfortable giving out their Venmo. That's kind of a private, yeah. So I don't know, but that's a good question, though. Yeah, I just know that I've I've run into it, like, with Walt Disney World and Disneyland. Um, like, specifically on our last trip to Disneyland, I was so embarrassed, but I, just, I don't carry cash. I'm... I'm at that age where we just don't value cash that and age. think everything is digital. So and you asked him for his Venmo? I did. I said, do you have a Venmo that I can tip you on? And he was like, I actually don't. And but it's just... It bypass the company altogether. It, it, yeah, it would. But I mean, that's why a lot of people tip in cash. So that way they don't yeah. have to report their tips and it goes more straight into their pocket. But that's why I... I, I'd always be interested with with crews. I mean, it's I feel like Venmo's universal. And try and it. Did, Let me give you mine, Craig, and transfer some money over. Yeah, sure. Isn't that how we tipped our um, VIP tour guide that we did? The other uh, that we did together. Yeah, Disney World. That is, yeah, him? our uh, VIP tour guide. We did that way. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's something I, I guess, I just never thought of. Yeah. I mean, I use Venmo. Yeah. I use Venmo quite a bit. Yeah. And the only reason I thought about it, too, is because, again, I will bring cash on this cruise, but I know I've gotten into that before with room service, as Elaine mentioned. It never really dawned on me that, like, with room service, bring cash for that. So, like, the first time that I used it on DCL, I expected them to bring up, like, a, you know, a tablet that at least gave you a, a receipt that says you can add on a tip or something like that. And they didn't. They just brought the food and it was, here you go. So then they're standing there because clearly everyone else knows to tip and I didn't. So it was it was very embarrassing in well, that way. Bring and cash. I, you know, bring cash. Teresa, I just don't really carry cash anywhere. I it's Now you it's, know you need to. I know, but where do you get cash at? Where do you find an ATM? cash? An ATM. What when you is go to the that? grocery store, get cash back. Okay, I do cash back. So I will I say that. that. But uh, the only other thing I'd say with tipping for me, too, is watch how much you eat. Because I am that very, very selfish person in the restaurants that I make sure uh, that I get to try everything that I want to try. And sometimes that means having uh, like three appetizers dropped off at the table and three entrees sometimes and usually only like one or two desserts i go a little bit light on that oh. but um you, you are making your your serving staff work a lot harder uh, when you're asking for that many dishes as opposed to you know a, a standard level of service so if you feel like you're ordering an excessive amount of food you probably need to add a little extra tip on there too yeah i think that covers just about 
all the scenarios I can think of. Elaine, you have any other ones? I think that's it. And and I'm glad uh, Craig brought that up because I, in addition to the stateroom attendant, we also kind of give a little bit more to the surveys. Um, honestly, not necessarily the head server because all he does is come over and say hi and leave. You know, but sometimes but we had a head server one time that really did a good job and I did give him a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, you know. It, He's worked hard for that I'll position. I'll do it. I've had head servers that are at the table every night, get to know you, talk mm-hmm. to you, engage with you. Those guys, I'm going to give extra to. But then mm-hmm. I've had, had this last cruise I was on. Head server never showed his face at my table once. Wow. Never showed at the table once. So now whether or not you put the uh, the 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 tip card into the envelope and hand it to them, they're still getting that tip. They're still getting that tip. So, but be damned if I'd be putting any extra money in it. Yeah. So it depends on the head server you get. There are some times that I will even give the assistant server more than I'm giving the regular server because that assistant server is the one that learns that you want a Diet Coke every night when you sit down and that you want regular butter instead of the flavored butter and they've got it ready to go. By the time you get there and they're like, if you have kids at your table, they're doing all of the magic tricks and they're telling jokes and all of that. And sometimes I just, I see them more and they do more for me. So it's, it's definitely a fluid situation and how things go on your own cruise. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go, folks. That's our discussion on tipping guidelines for Disney Cruise Line. We hope you enjoyed it. We will see you again next week with another episode of the DCL show. Thanks for being with us.